So we're going to work on graphing this problem, trying to get a little bit of information off the graph. The problem says graph the polynomial and determine. Uh, let's see, no, wrong one. It says graph the polynomial in a given viewing rectangle. Find coordinates of all local extrema. State each answer to two decimal places. Okay. So here's here's our function, and we're going to graph it in negative four to four. But you know. The book's actually giving you the the y coordinates, but you don't have to be given the y coordinates. And we're going to use this as an opportunity to practice a couple things. I'm going to set my graph between negative four and four, and then let the calculator do the rest of it. So if you hit zoom and then zero, that's really zoom fit. So zoom and then zero, the graph will adjust itself so that the y coordinates are created to fit our graph. And we get something that looks like this. It's kind of hard to tell where this crosses the x-axis, isn't it? You look at that and go, well, I don't know. <laughs> Tough to tell. Now, a clever way that you can kind of zoom in to what you need to see is with the zoom box command. So let's look at that. So type the zoom key. So press zoom. And then the first option there is zoom box. So press that, and it's going to put a cursor on your graph. Now slide over to somewhere around, say, negative 2. It doesn't have to be exactly on negative 2. And press the Enter key, because this is going to be one corner of our new viewing window. And then move up just a little bit. Just get above, just a little bit to the north of the y or the x-axis. And you're starting to draw your axis, draw your box, I should say. And then move to the right, somewhere out here to, say, you know, two and a half-ish should be good. This is going to be your new viewing window. And notice that I've made it very tight because I'm trying to get rid of a lot of the height above and below this because it's squishing my graph. I can't see very well where it crosses the x-axis. So when you get a rectangle that you're happy with, press the Enter key. And it kind of zooms in a little bit. And now you can see where it crosses the x-axis. Now, I've got a lot of extra junk here. And I'm not really a fan of it. So what's going on with this? Well, what's going on with that is that your graph is trying to draw a lot of tick marks on the y-axis. If you hit the y or the window key, you see that your graph goes from negative 86 to 63 and change. So it's got like a, almost 150 tick marks that it's trying to squeeze in there because your y scale is 1. Let's make it something bigger, like 25. So now your graph won't be so crowded in the y direction. You get something that looks like this. There's a couple things I want to find here. One of the things that I want to find is where it crosses the x-axis. Now, there's, got, there's different names for that. It's the root, it's the x-intercept, it's the zero. You can find that or make your calculator find that by hitting the second key, then the trace key, because that takes you to the calculate menu. Second, trace. Does it look like an option here that's, you know, maybe helpful? Yeah. The second one down is a zero. Now, it's going to ask you to kind of limit where it's looking. So... You want something to the left of where it crosses the x-axis. And you can kind of do that by tracing over with the left and right arrow keys. And you get someplace and you plus, press enter. Or you could just type in a number. Like I think something a little bit bigger than 2, say 2.2 should work. So a right bound, I want to trap my root beside, between these things. 2.2. Now, when you start to type it, it'll open up this little window down at the bottom. You press enter, and that's your right bound. Notice that where my graph crosses the x axis is between these two. Once you do that, press enter, bam, got it. So the root is at about 1.88. You guys able to match it on your calculator? Okay. It also asks us for the extrema here. There's the minimum and maximum. 
let's just try and find the minimum because the maximum is going to be pretty similar. Not going to be much different. The minimum looks like it's someplace around here, right? In fact, if you wanted a better look at that, we could do zoom box again. Zoom, and I'll make this one corner. Uh, let's see, zoom one. Let's see, I'll make this one corner of the box, and then come over here. That eh, should be good enough. So I got a better look at that. I didn't need to do that. But now it makes it pretty clear that my minimum is someplace around here. Let's go back to the calculate menu. Second trace. Minimum is the third option. Kind of same thing as before. I want to pick something to the left of my root. So say at 1. And something to the right of my, I said root, right of my minimum, which would be 2. Press enter, and it should find the minimum value here. So we've got a root at x is about 1.884, and a minimum, I should say a local minimum, at x is about. 1.2599, about 1.26. So approximately 1.26. How are we looking with those two? You okay with those operations? The zoom box and finding the roots? Okay. Good.